Hello YouTube, and welcome to my uh, my video on my 2000 and, oh, 2021, wow, um, gardening van setup, and um, how I actually rack out the van. Anyway, enjoy this short bit of footage of how I rack out this van, and then join us in a minute, and I'll show you around the finished object. Thank you very much. <laughs> You're going the wrong way, pal. Huh? You're going the wrong way. Why? Mind yourself. Hey. Right, so that's the longest tool we've got. Yeah. I do want it to stick a little bit out the the end, isn't it? Yeah, like here. No, I want a little bit of space at the end. I don't want to run the floor all the way to the end. Not, because not I want some space here. to be able to get the tools out. Yeah, that's a good worry. Yeah? Mm -hmm. You think that's a good idea? Yeah, that's actually. So, um, I've got to decide if I want to do the floor. Just need to saw it. Need to saw it. Take from over there, please. Okay. Okay. I'm actually recording you. Yeah, thanks. Right, so we want to, although we're going to be, um, although, <laughs> although we're going to be putting the, the floating floor in, we don't want to lose any space. Hi. So, so what we're going to do is have it going all the way to the ceiling, but we're going yeah, to have to cut today, a little bit of these. Today off. we're actually doing this floor in. It's actually a little broke. Daddy's doing it. It's not, it's not broke, Al. There's actually just a little coming up. So, so we're going to go 54 inches. Yeah, 54 inches. It's just up to there, isn't it? Yeah, that's right. So I wanted to do it with the shelf already to touch. Oh, uh, Dad? Yes, mate. It's not recording. So we actually only need to take an inch off these. Yes. Daddy. So we're going to get the hacksaw yep. and cut an inch off them, okay? Yeah. Is it going to be a little loud? No, I'm going to do the hacksaw by hand. Oh, hack. Hi. Okay. Done. Okay. That's not done there, no. that's what I want. I that one. There you go. See, this is actually a 40 inch, this um, on top, and we can't even do it because that's just trying to work it out, and the screen's just nearly done. So that's the other shelf, isn't it? This one has a little bit of trauma to it. Yeah. We just need to try and straighten this one out soon, don't we? Yeah. Yeah. What is it? Flat. Good as new.
sawing up some wood. Right, should we put the floor in? I think I need to get out. Okay, give your hand, you alright? Good job. Can you mind your proof for me, please? Thank you. Flush to the ends? Uh, yep. Can you see the ends? Yep. You can? No. You can't? No. Nope, so we need a, a little bit. aren't we? It's what we want. Right, okay, off your hop because what I want to do is just tap it this way so we can see the... Aha! Brute force and ignorance. Right, let's see if the other bit fits. Flush over your side, uh, over here. Yeah. Good. Cut the first screw. Thank you. done it so I've got two cubby coals over there. Looking around this side we've got four compartments four of any real one two three four yeah there is a little bit over there but we're not gonna be using that no. so let's have a little look see how I can fill them up a little bit Thank you. 
lots of sweeping. You do some sweeping out for me? Yes, please. Okay. How much is it? Uh, £0. Oh, right, free, thank you. So here we are, this is sort of a day-to-day -day sort of uh, if I was going on maintenance, hedge cutting, mowing or whatever. So uh, people will know I have this 56 um, hater and I'll be honest it didn't even come out in 2020. This is the furthest it's been. Um, I really don't like the mower. I really don't like it. I like the finish when the grass is absolutely perfect, but when it's ever dry and perfect. So anyway, that's another story for another day. So with this, you'll see I've done a, a raised floor. Now I've actually done this all the way around. So this is a uh, Vauxhall Vivaro. It's the long wheel based and it's a 2012 model. So I've split the the raised floor into two panels two parts so I've done it like a decking so this bit back is all one section into bits and then I've done it this way as well so underneath here I've got clean got the mattock and the sledgehammer slash um, axe I've got fork spade edging shears down there there I've just got my extension pole and a wolf garden handle uh, along this side I've made it perfectly for my fuel can to sit underneath here I've got I've made room for um, this is for when I do fencing works I've got all my sort of shepherd crooks underneath here for my pegging out I'll show you what they're for in a second this is currently vacant underneath here and I do have a floating support so all of these have been fixed on with brackets but that one underneath there that you can see at the back is a floating one the reason I've done it as floating is so it gives support and when I mean floating it's not fixed I can take that out I can get my arm down there and pull it out but all the time that there's something in there weight it's been distributed on there I'll show you why I've got that floating in a second here I've got this one for all my long digging bars. So these literally go all the way down and out of harm's way. And I've still got room in there if I need to. Here I've got all my spirits. These long ones go down and they have to stop up behind the racking on the racking and they all stop us at different lengths so the shorter ones so they all stop and don't get lost the only one that could potentially get lost is that one that one could flow down the back but to be honest it's always going to be sat on top of some of the others so I can pull it out Okay, let's show you how we can get the mowers out. Thank 
So for my ramps, I literally just used two scaffold boards. These are 1.8 meters. Now these are um, ramps that I used to have for a contract where I was doing tractor work and there was a bit of curb and I bought those. They're just heavy duty uh, ramps and I've made them so they're the perfect height for fitting up there. Um, and as you saw, they just sit up there with a bungee strap which I've put onto there and it literally hooks into there. This checker plate I had left over from when I had a Land Rover, I have fixed this on with uh, just some round headed screws and it's to protect this edge of this chipboard. This chipboard I got for free. I took it out of a skip and it was a, what was it? Um, eight foot by four foot piece. So I saved myself quite a few quid there. I put down this lino flooring purely because I know that I spill petrol or water or whatever. Um, I was going to put down hardboard, um, but I decided to go for that chip box. It was free. That's what I like. And if it does go in time, it's no hardship because it was free and I can just go put a bit of wood in there if needs be. So over here, I have put one of these D-rings onto the frame which I built which has been fixed down to the floor and then literally got ratchet straps on here. Do that, take off the pressure, off. And of course this is all braked as well at the moment as well. So let's get this out. Right, so to get the mower out it's unstrapped. All I'm gonna have to do is just take the brake off and give it a pull back. Simple as that. Right, I've got the door closed. It's going to be quite echoey in here, but I just thought I'd show you what I've got a, uh, one of my lights in here as well. Because the lights are in this van are a bit rubbish, so I'm going to have to think about LEDs. But anyway, you can see the amount of space that I've got left back there, which is fantastic. This also acts as a really good step. So this is what I was saying about keeping this one free. So these are my fencing space. So both of these can sit underneath there, if need be, and then that floating bit is down here. So you can see the ramps literally just get pegged up there. I've got all of this space free still for what I'm going to use. Not quite sure yet. I thought this hook here would be quite good for my coat when it's wet, um, you know, for all the waterproofs or whatever. On the back door, what I've done here. And this is basically a coach bolt which I've put through the uh, plyboard. I took that off and drilled through, put a bit of wood behind there and drilled a hole through it, put the coach bolt through. And this can be done up and unloosened uh, and whatever. But basically, so I can take off reels of uh, the strewer line as I go, but then there's enough thread on there for me to put a different. Uh, thickness line on there as well. Strimmer harness, again literally just put a, a little bit of wood behind just to give it a bit of binding and this was something that my trousers came on. First aid kit, I know these things they open and everything falls out which is why I put it onto a hook back there so that can be taken off um, and put back on as need be. I'll put that back on in a minute because it's with two hands. So in regards to the tools, I had a real job with the blower. Uh, I do have a backpack blower as well, but there's no way I was mounting the backpack blower on the walls. It was just far too heavy. So with all of these, I've mounted blocks of wood behind because all of these windows are recessed. Mounted blocks of wood behind and then gone through into them. This is a anti-theft bracket 
of fencing. So this would go into like uh, the panel, panel, and round a concrete post, so they can't be stropped out. Um, but I've got these U-shape um, brackets there, and literally box it back down in, and with between the tension of this and that holding it flat there, that doesn't come off. Again, that's nicely tucked down in there, but I've got a bungee strap around there, and then I've got a small hook. Let's take this off. It's not going to fall on me because I've still got the hook up the back there. So it hooks up on, and then the bungee literally. literally just hooks onto there. There we go. I'm sorry about the camera footage with this, but trying to do it inside the van. There's no way to put it up and do it. So I've got the same sort of system going on here. With the 45, I put a small coach bolt in because they've got this little bit there. That was pretty much good enough on its own, but I have got another one of those Y hooks, U hooks underneath there. And then again, we've got the bungee just to keep it pulled forwards. With this, I've got the bungee and then one of those U hooks there. And I've got another one up here just to make sure, you know, it don't come off. I'm not going anywhere. I've been around a few roundabouts and they've not budged at all. Fuel cans, literally wedged in, and then I've got things like, because I don't want to have everything sticking out the end down there, bolt croppers down there. Uh, onto my racking. Wet weather gear, chainsaw boots, chainsaw trousers, I keep up there. My weeding kit, trug, and kneeler. My drills are up here at the moment just because I've been using them. These sort of things won't live in here. None of these tools will live in here. Um, apart from small things like this sort of thing. This is worth stuff to me, but it's not worth anything to anybody else, really. Now, the wall stuff used to um, annoy me slightly when it was in a box. So what I've done is I took out the bottom of this shelf, made another one, and basically drew some holes. So those round bits can swap down into it. Off. So all of them have got their own little place. I know it's crude, but they ain't going anywhere. Hold them in place and they're all easily accessible as well. Cut a little screws into the ply board there and then again the old bungee trick literally around it. These are some magnetic strips, so if I wanted to put my spare secateurs or whatever on there, they can go on there. Or if I wanted to put some spanners or whatever on there, not a problem at all. And just a rag there. Might be wondering why I've got a heavy duty magnet in here. Um, apart from the magnet fishing, I was always dropping stuff down holes for fence posts and things and um, so that's going to be useful for <laughs> fishing stuff out or screws that I drop or whatever. This is one of the poles for the wolf. I've got a whole load of these sort of rolling clamps. And it just holds that in place there. Mm. This racking came from B&Q and I think they were about, I don't know, 10 quid each. But I had these kicking around from uh, one of my units. So I literally cut them down. And there's some of these just boxes. So I've got, let's put it back up in there. So this one's got all my two stroke oils in it. Um, bit of car cleaner, um, spray paint or whatever. My wipes, all that sort of thing. This box down here literally has all my gloves in it. Literally the whole box has 
all my types of gloves in there. And then down here are going to be miscellaneous tools. I'm measuring wheel for when I go and quote jobs, uh, craft knives, handsaws or whatever, uh, ratchet straps and all that sort of thing. I put all of these fixing points down. These go to the timber frame that I've built. Mm. Just so when I have uh, like whatever in here really, if it's the generator or the mower or whatever, it can all be fixed. Oh, and then I did a ply board end here. Another one of these hooks for just my ear defenders, eye protection, and then my skid lid and everything there as well. But there we are. So I'm what, uh, six foot two, and I can, well, I'm kneeling at the moment, but this being. Uh, it's a little bit taller than my my last van, um, but it's perfectly fine, absolutely fine. I can ride the mower into here. Um, I'd rather not, if I'm honest, because what I do is drive it up onto the ramp, and it's so light I can lift up the back and push it in to to set it home. No problems there at all. Um, not a lot else to say really. I mean, it's going to be time will tell. I mean, kidding out a van. It's quite a personal thing, especially for a gardener or a landscaper, and because I do both, I do a lot of fencing. It's a quite a personal thing. Um, I think this raised floor is going to make a real difference to me because I'm not. I can if I've got mowers, the chances are I'm going to be mowing, and then if I'm doing maintenance, I can leave the mower out and then do the maintenance afterwards. The only thing that I've got to have a think about is the brush cutter, um, but I'll keep you posted on that. But I'm thinking about doing something to the roof. Um, but I'll have a little think about that, I might do it. Talking about the roof, let's go out there and I'll show you my uh, Facebook marketplace bargain. Right, so this is a Rhino roof rack. Now I got this on eBay um, a couple of days ago, uh, not on eBay, on Facebook a couple of days ago, for the mere sum of £100. Now this is the full length, full width uh, roof rack. Now this is the long wheel based version of the van um, and it came off a standard so I did have a little bit of fettling with the back bracket um, and it came with a roller Now I ended up having to take the roller off to actually get that bracket on but I got an idea that I might actually drill the end put the, um, the roller in a different place but for 100 quid I'm pretty chuffed with, with that yeah, that's going to make a difference because I can get a six foot fence panel on there. So there we are. Um, this is going to be my final video of 20, 2020, I would have thought. I might get, I have got a couple of uploaded ones already of some like pollarding and uh, just a, a few other little bits. So I wish everybody, it's definitely going to be my last video before Christmas now. I wish everybody a Merry Christmas. I hope everybody has a beautiful, relaxing time. I've seen on social media quite a few people are still um, working up to Christmas. Personally, I finished um, last Friday, um, and I only, I only worked till 10 o'clock. Um, so that would have been whatever the Friday was before Christmas. But, um, yeah, if you don't know, um, myself, Jason Gardner, and um, Andy... Raw, the footage chain at the Chocolate Gardener have actually started up a Facebook group for um, professional gardeners and landscapers, tree surgeons, etc. So do, do, do go over there and find us, or I'll put a link in below. Um, reason we've done that is it's easier for everybody to sort of communicate on there. You can have a bit more of a chat, and you can um, get to know each other a little bit more and ask questions or, or whatever. It's just another out it's a, a community based thing. But yeah, hope you've enjoyed that little video. Wish you all a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. And I'll catch up with everyone soon. All the best.